Welcome back to the channel. Today we're unboxing, building and painting the Type 64 rifle from Little Armoury and this is from the 112th scale model series. Let's open this up and take a look. Okay, we'll get this package open. Okay, so we've got our just laying out the packs now. We've got the main rifle assembly there, instruction manual, but and of course the bayonet and let's get into the build now so again as always uh, if you are uh, getting into model making for the first time it's a great idea to use these um, clippers as opposed to a modeling knife it, they're just easier to cut off the sprue and you're less likely to cut off more than you really need um, using Tamiya uh, sand sponge there I think that's 1500 grit from memory uh, it's just a nice general way to sand down any excess there that that's not needed So there aren't too many parts here, so you know you can remove parts as you go, or you can cut them all off. Um, up to you. I mean, I'm technically following the instructions there, which you can see there on the top of the screen. This is really fiddly. Um, <laughs> had a lot of trouble with this uh, pistol grip. These pieces were dropping off everywhere, so. Um, yeah be careful that you don't lose parts these things are very small and will go flying if you're not careful that's another reason why to use the clippers and not a modeling knife you tend to have a bit more control over but if you're cutting parts off with a modeling knife off the sprue they will tend to go flying now um, sometimes you can just um, push parts on you don't have to glue them but um, I just wanted to glue that handguard in. Now, I would recommend that you don't glue the um, butt stock on um, until you've decided, if, you, if you're painting it, um, then leave the butt stock unglued until you paint the, uh, the rifle and then glue it on later. If you're not painting it, then go ahead and um, glue the butt stock if you wanna um, make sure that that's secured. Yeah, so again, um, do what I say, don't do what I do. Um, there was a few times there I'm cutting towards myself. Make sure you're cutting away from yourself. Um, safety first, everybody. Using some uh, wet and dry sandpaper there, just some coarser excess there, but be really careful with that stuff. Um, you don't want to take off more than you need to. Okay, so just gluing on the um, handguard there. So this rifle was uh, introduced in the, uh, what was it, the 1964 it was introduced. It's still in use by some parts of the um, Japanese self-defense forces, the Japanese Coast Guard, but uh, it has been superseded um, by the Hawa Type 89 uh, for the rest of the, um, the army, or the self-defense force I should say is what they refer to themselves as. Uh, so it's chambered in 7.62 by 51 NATO. Uh, apparently it was more accurate than M14, but the uh, concerns with, with the rifle was that parts would come off in field use. Uh, it was a complicated manufacturer, so um, hence um, they didn't really get much by way of export market uh, with this rifle from what I understand. But look, it's, uh, it's a cool build. 
Okay, so just uh, sending through the parts lock there. Um, some of these parts, some parts um, do fit better than others. Um, so notice on the final build there, there was a little bit of a gap on the top of the buttstock that I probably will eventually come back in and just fill in with some um, model putty. Um, but for now, it's not really that super noticeable from the side. But there's a little bit of a gap on the top there. But hey, it depends on how you how much detail you want to put into this, right? Okay, so as usual with these builds, um, there's a magazine that you, that affixes to the rifle. It's not a full length magazine uh, because it's not designed. Yeah, so we need a it's a cut down magazine to fit into the rifle. You do get one extra spare mag, but obviously that spare mag will not fit into the rifle because it um, it's a full length, it's a full size magazine. You know, you know what I mean. Okay, so just uh, sending that magazine down. Uh, bipod. So you've got two options here. You've got uh, the open bipod and a uh, retracted bipod. Uh, so unlike the F, the FAMAS build that's um, on my channel, you you've got you've got to pull them off to to adjust to 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 change them. So up to you if you if you want to go with one over the other you can glue them in place if you want um, but I recommend not doing that so you've got the option of, of um, changing them over if, if you want to do that later on. There we go. Yeah so a lot of these parts just fit nice and snugly you don't need to glue them in but just um, be careful um, about gluing things because obviously once it's glued they can be quite hard to unglue. Here's the bayonet. Really good detail on the bayonet. Um, it's got a recessed um, part on the blade. Um, it's, it's a really 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 well um, really well um, designed. Looks, looks very good and it fits on. So yeah, there we go. So here's the parts all laid out. And here's what it looks like in real life. And what I've done is I've painted it in gun metal. I've shaded the highlights with aluminium and I've, I've painted the butt, butt a red brown. And here's the final build. So I'm very happy with this one. I hope you enjoyed the build.